ladies and gentlemen, bride and groom. Uh, the first thing we'd like to say is to say thank you for all attending today to share in this special day for John and Kelly. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, my name is Damo. Damo! Damo! And I am Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Before we continue, for those of you who might be feeling the effects of the alcohol already, there are two of us up here and you're not seeing double. <laughs> it's a huge honour for us to be asked to be John's best man. Now, me and Tom were very apprehensive about having to deliver a funny and witty speech, but then we realised we were approaching this all wrong and this was our one opportunity to destroy, <laughs> I mean, share some stories about John. <laughs> Uh, but before we get to those stories, we do need to make some important thank yous. Uh, on behalf of the bridesmaids, we'd like to thank Jan and Kelly uh, for their kind compliments and gifts. Also, on behalf of the ushers and the bridesmaids, we'd like to thank John for his particularly kind words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, of and of course, I think you'll all agree that the bridesmaids have looked fantastic today. Yes. Uh, and of course, we can't leave out the beautiful bride. Now, now, Kelly, I do appreciate you are not the biggest fan of the 1986 hit, Lady in Red. <laughs> but I think you'll find that today, more than ever, the words are so fitting. Never have I seen you looking so lovely. <laughs> I've never seen you shine so bright. <laughs> never have I seen so many men ask you if they wanted to dance. <laughs> They're looking for a little romance given half the chance. <laughs> never have I seen that dress you're wearing. <laughs> or the highlights in your curly hair. <laughs> Uh, those are, might not be the exact words of the song, but they're definitely the words that Carrie was singing later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, on to a serious business about friend John. And when you first meet John, he can come across as a little bit condescending. <laughs> Slightly sarcastic. <laughs> and... It's a bit arrogant. <laughs> but, 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 once get, but once you actually get to know John, you actually realise that yes, he's actually <laughs> he's all this, but he's also actually a lot more than that. He's witty, clever, loyal, and according to Sally, my wife, he can be quite charming. <laughs> John. <laughs> <laughs> um, John is also by far one of the funniest people that we've ever met. His Keith Lemon dance is amazing, and I'm sure you'll all see him doing it a little bit later. And we have never ever tired of his Borat impression. I am saying something. He wants to talk like this, but three sweet things. <laughs> as John does, but you get the idea. Yeah. Uh, following Kelly's endo in Edinburgh, a new story came to life. An absolute <laughs> golden nugget of a story. <laughs> when John was a little boy... <laughs> we like to start this one here. When John was a little boy, like most little boys, he used to like superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that at dinner times he would not come to the table. He refused to come to the table unless his mother Val oh, yeah, would call one. him Spider Man. <laughs> And John still can't come. <laughs> 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 um, another story that I'm only 
to tell, I'm absolutely obligated to tell, is another story that uh, took place in Ibiza 2002. I'm John, I'm Tom Stanger. Uh, John, do you, remember, do you remember that holiday? John, uh, what was the name of the nightclub that we went to in Ibiza that, that first night? Who was that friend that you made? In there? Uh, David, David, David. <laughs> to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, this story has been edited. We, we can't tell it. It's just too gruesome, too explicit for this time of day. If you really want to know the gory details, you will have to come and buy us a pint at the bar, and we will tell everything. It was only put in to see fear in his eyes. <laughs> and believe me, there was fear. I'm scared. <laughs> Recently. John was asked three things that he would save in a fire in his house. Including, of course, his lovely wife, Kelly. And his beloved forest season ticket. Here it is! Red, red, red! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, he's a man you've by the way. John would save is his record collection. He could not be without his music and his love of DJing. The second thing is his laptop. He could never be without his adult collection of <laughs> dirty movies. And lastly, it was his cats. Well, we all know that John likes a good pussy. Oh. 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 Moving on. This is you said you were going to be out. Moving on. Moving on, moving on, John and Kelly are now married and uh, I'm sure that they'll be looking to start a family of their own and I think you all realise how good John is with children. <laughs> Except, this one time, we all went camping and British friends. Some kids were knocking around on the back of John's tent. <laughs> Playing with a guy raised, tapping the back of the tent, as kids do. All of a sudden, we heard John shout, I'll chop your bloody hands off! <laughs> in, in John's defence, he did think they were our children. <laughs> but I, I think that's a rubbish defence. <laughs> Well, John, what can we say? Today you are the groom and you have married a wonderful bride. You bestowed this honour to be your best man. But today you are the best man. We hope your love be modern enough to survive the times, yet old fashioned enough to last forever. Aww. Next is the toast, but before the toast. Sorry, can I squeeze by? We need you to put this on. So, the only last thing to say is a toast to the bride and groom. So please, can everyone be upstanding, please? And a final toast to Mr. and Mrs. McGrory. Mr. and Mrs. McGrory. Mr. and Mrs. Pardema. Lois. <laughs> Thank you.